welcome to today's video. Good morning, welcome to today's video. I'm here with Manny from the Black Cyclist Network, doing a bit of riding around London today, finding a little bit more about the movement that he set up. This guy's got a bigger camera than me. <laughs> Mate, I'm fabulous, baby. The sun is up, the guns is up. What more can you ask for? <laughs> Some of the brightest kit I've ever seen. <laughs> where are you taking me? We're going to go North London. Yeah, so I'm going to take you through Tottenham, baby. Place where I was raised. Show you around Broadwell Farm, Tottenham Stadium. Uh, I'll tell you a secret. No one from Tottenham actually supports Tottenham. They all support Arsenal for some reason. Can't be as one. <laughs> City. We're at Ali Pali now. We'll talk a little bit about hey. Black Cyclist Network. Put my makeup on first. Well, put your makeup on. Put your makeup on. I already know what the Black Cyclist Network is. Right. For someone who doesn't know anything at all, right. what's it all about? Basically, Black Cyclist Network. Our objectives is we trying to um, bring more people of colour into cycling. And one of the things that we we're doing is we're raising our profile um, on social media, and we also organise group rides. Um, we organise rides in uh, Regent's Park every four weeks. We do like a big ride venturing out to Windsor, sometimes to Brighton. But the whole idea is that we want to create a platform for people of colour to, who are anxious about joining, uh, you know, their quote unquote generic cycling club or their local cycling club because they feel like um, they don't see anyone that looks like them. We're trying to create that place, that forum for them so they can come into cycling and, you know, feel free to ask silly questions. Uh, we're there to support them, show them how to ride in groups and then to build their confidence. So later on, if they feel like they want to join a, another site, a local cycling club, then they, they have a bit more confidence to do so. If you're a, um, a female or a person of color and you come into cycling, there's a lot of do's and don'ts. And we try and sort of create that platform so people can feel like, you know, when they see people like them, they, they, they feel like they can do it a bit more, if that makes sense. <laughs> we literally started six months ago, like, um, I feel it was like October last year. And in our first ride, we did a ride to Windsor. We received, we got about, I think, 12 people turned up. We had to actually split it into two groups at, at, at a certain point because there's just too many of us and you can't be riding, you know, to, um, to a breast. It's just way too long. So um, we had a bit of discussion about that. Halfway through the ride, we realized, oh my God, maybe this is not feasible. So we split into two groups. But yeah, that initial ride, we had a big turnout, which is brilliant. Um, a lot of people turned out, and, we, and I, I wasn't actually anticipating this, but some people that turned out weren't necessarily used to sort of riding in a group. So we had to quickly do like a, you know, a, a quick introduction to group, group riding, pointing out potholes, you know, the etiquette uh, of riding in groups. From that, we've gone on to, to bigger things. Um, we've increased our membership and it's constantly increasing. And now, you know, people connect to us worldwide, which is amazing. Obviously, you don't have this issue, but confidence. Yeah. Do you think that's an issue for people of colour approaching a normal bog standard cycling club? Maybe they turn up to a club run and there's 200 people out to ride. It's a massive issue um, because, um, uh, let me put it this way. If you're white and you're looking for a cycling club, right? Every cycling club pretty much is a white cycling club. It's, you know, run by white folks, right? So you go into a cycling club and if, if you're new to cycling in itself, right? You, you have that anxiety to begin with because it's a, new, it's a new thing for you. You're not necessarily sure you're doing the right thing. You know, cycling is, is steeped in tradition, as my uh, friend Andy says, right? It's steeped in tradition and etiquette. Part of it is about safety and trust because you're riding with people really close to you. So you're going into a new club. You just bought yourself a bike. It's a lot of anxiety because people are telling you, hey, do this, don't do that, do, you know. People really mean well. So it's like Charlie will come up next to you in a group ride and you tell, give you this little advice. Then Tony will come and then Eric will come and then Francis Cade will come and give you this advice. It's said in good faith because we're trying to, you know, make you a better cyclist, right? They're telling you all these things you're not doing right. It'll make you feel like, you know, maybe you, you don't belong. If you see the people that are telling you uh, they look like you, right, then you feel like, ah, oh, you know what? Maybe it's no factor, it's no matter of me not belonging, it's more a factor of me um, not being at the level yet. You see what I mean? So you go, you go back home and even though you're a little bit down, you're thinking, gosh, you're a bit more positive about it because you're thinking, oh, you know what? I've got a lot to learn and there's a lot to this stuff, but at least, you know what? I can see Charlie, I can see Francis. I can be like that because, you know, I can see they look like me. Whereas if you're a woman or a person of colour and you go into a cycling club for the first time, everyone you're going to see is pretty much white faces, right? So when you take, after all this, you go back home and you're thinking, on top of thinking, oh, you know what? I've, I've got, got a lot, lot to, to learn. Do. I've yeah, got a yeah. lot to learn. You're also thinking, but 
no one there looks like me so now it's just it, it becomes a question of now do I really belong and then you start to doubt yourself you see what I mean so there's a that's where space like the black cyclist network is useful because not only we've got a diverse group and so if you're a person of color you can actually look at me and be like oh you know you read my stories and you know you know I've done it I wore bib sh um, boxer shorts underneath my bib shorts I didn't what know what, like I've done all the mistakes you can make so that, that is the difference and it makes a massive you know if you understand that if you're a woman if you understand if you're a person of color and I hope that analogy sort of makes sense what do you want black cyclists to do if they're watching this and they don't ride with anyone yet come yeah. and join you on a ride yeah listen feel free come and join us and um, this is what we're all about because our, our main goal is to try and improve cycling um within the black community to uh, to get more people within the black and minority ethnic communities to take up cycling because the, the overall aim is this right as a cyclist i believe it's a movement it's a cultural thing so the more people we can actually get into cycling the better it is for the planet and the better it is for people's well-being because you know people um not only get fitter they also you know improve our, our carbon emissions and stuff like that so instead of making a journey by car to make a journey by, by bike and so we can't really go wrong as cyclists and that's why i get really upset when people like throw like you know gels on the road and stuff like that if you're new and you want to join a club come come ride with us come ride with us in regent's park follow us on strava at black cyclist network we're on strava we're also on facebook and we're also on instagram we, we always put our cool videos on instagram so follow us and lastly unfollow francis and follow me <laughs> We can turn the whole world around I'm in the backseat really trying to hold it down And if you up down from the lost and found <laughs> Mate, it's been a pleasure Too, brother. Stay humble, keep it gangster It's great to hang out with Manny All done with him now Quick visit to Bobby Quick Otherwise known as Rob Quirk What have you got? Why have you got that? That's mine What do you think of my bike? It's alright Disturbing the peace with some peace of mind. Sleeping in jeans, I'ma need a night. OD on a cheap device. OC. So you may remember last time we were in Rob's workshop, he had some 3D printed bike parts done, uh, just out of plastic. Now the full metal versions not only have turned up, but they've been put on a bike. That looks really nice. Look at that. Apart from it, it's like a spaceship. Being seamless, yeah, like a uh, spaceship. Spaceship. It looks. It looks amazing, but also we've got integrated clamp for the seat post. So I guess you can make things to tiny, tiny tolerances, which you wouldn't be able to without 3D printing. Funny thing with 3D printing is because it's done by sintering powder. So you have a big pile of powder and a laser hits it and melts it all together. That's why you get this grain. But because it's this process that has a lot of heat. You get a bit of distortion. So the parts actually go a little bit out of spec. But on the whole, it's super accurate. Very little clean up. And then yeah, you can do things like this where you can see there's a bolt and a clamp. That's a reverse thread bolt. So when you tighten it, it pushes a wedge up against the seat post to clamp the seat post. So there's a few carbon bikes. Including my Vilia. Yeah, this, yeah. Like your Vilia. Maybe not the same design, but similar function. I think the new Specialized Venge has it. I've never seen a steel bike have it. So it's quite, quite unique if not completely unique and then one of a kind mate one of a kind like every one of your frames is to be honest <laughs> that's why i like you friends <laughs> so it's just streamlining really isn't it streamlining it. yeah i mean makes makes the build process faster i mean this one not so much because i was learning a whole new setup working out how to put all these parts in the jig like these were i put a ring of silver on the inside of the tube and then the heat the outside and then pull the silver out then when you're doing that in a jig you have to work out point all the silver in rings inside the tubes point it all in the jig and then tacking it making sure the silver doesn't drop down the tube or whatever wasn't too hard actually what is that where does that go so this goes here but the reason why these are lighter you have this lattice structure inside so 3D printed inside each of these pieces are these little uh, triangular diamond shapes. And they're 3D printed in steel? Yeah. Because of that, we can make the wall thinner. So the wall on these are only half a mil fit. Probably could go thinner on some parts. But for these are the first pieces. So for the first pieces, uh, we're making them a bit beefier. Yeah. Sick. That's amazing. Does the wheel fit? That's lucky. <laughs> well, I'm going home.
Good to see you, bro. Got filthy hands all the time. Always cuts in them. My iPhone finger recognition doesn't work. Really? Because. Because you cut your finger up. My fingerprint changes. <laughs> I should be a master criminal. <laughs>